This week on The Real Housewives of Potomac. We are in the Dominican Republic. Uh-huh. Her girl always sneaking with boys in the back of the house. Oh, I caught a boy on a, on a ring cam. She did. I caught a boy on a ring cam. She did. Yeah. And yeah. she told me. Right. I don't run and go and tell because that's your business. But I then Yo, what is up, everybody? Welcome back to it. We're going to be talking about the new episode of The Real Housewives of Potomac, Season 9, Episode 9. Pretty good episode, so let's get right into it. Okay, so we pick up at Wendy's 40th birthday party. Giselle and some of the ladies were asking Mia, what the hell? One minute you're crying to us about Gordon and Ink not getting along, then the next you're hanging out with him and Ink and posting it on Instagram. So like, what's going on? And Mia says, well, the fathers of my kids can get along. And Jacqueline kind of gets in there to say that because Gordon changes his minds very often, you know, sometimes he's okay with it, sometimes he isn't. For some reason, though, Mia is very mad at Giselle for bringing this up. And she was also a little mad at Jacqueline, too. They caught her saying to Jacqueline, F you, you never defend me. So then it was super cool that on behalf of the governor of Maryland, Wes Moore, Governor Wes Moore, Wendy got a, what they're ca they're calling it a citation, which I was like, what is that? But it's something good in, in this sense of the word. So I thought that was really amazing. Ashley is then talking to Stacy, and Stacy is telling Ashley that she's going to mediation for her divorce on Monday. Ashley then goes to tell all the ladies. So Giselle's like, oh no, we gotta talk to her about this. So they all go get Stacy and they go inside the house. And Stacy says, yeah, I'm going to mediation. I'm going into it, you know, being optimistic because me and my husband never wanted to be those types of people that were going to be fighting and being all crazy. So Giselle is giving her some advice. She's basically saying that she should be prepared because she has never seen this version of him, the version of him and you divorcing. And Stacy says, no, it's going to be OK. And Karen also gives her some advice. But overall, they're trying to say to her that she should be firm on what she wants, you know, have her things be clear. But Stacy again, claims that her situation will be different than Ashley and Giselle's because they are amicable. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I wish her I, I, I hope that that's true for for her sake. We also see Wendy talk to Eddie's family. It was a couple of his siblings. I like that Wendy talked to them and she also had her kids there so, you know, they could see who their aunties and uncles are. And then there was a really special moment where Wendy and one of Eddie's sisters give each other this emotional hug. Like, it meant a lot because Wendy's uh, sister-in-law, Eddie's sister, starts tearing up. And I was just like, oh, that's so sad. Wendy has a good heart for sure. That's why I've always said I believe, I don't know this for a fact, but just what I can gather, I believe that the drama to Eddie's family has to have been Susan, her mom. Definitely not Wendy, not Wendy. So that was pretty much it for Wendy's 40th party. The next day, Giselle and her eldest daughter go, who, uh, who, she just finished her first year at college. They go to an ice cream shop. They have like alcoholic ice cream, which I've never tried. I kind of want to try it. So they're just talking about how her first year was. And it's interesting because Giselle says that they actually got very close when she left for school because they were on the phone like every single day. Then they talk about the death of her grandpa, Giselle's father. At that point, she was at school, but the twins were in Giselle's house and they were they really held Giselle through that time and then she tells yourself that with all this alone time she's gonna have to maybe learn how to cook so then we see ashley and her kids and let me tell y'all these boys look just like their dad michael so ashley drops them off somewhere and then she goes to do her mediation with michael over their divorce moving on we see a bit more of kriana she goes to pay a visit to her husband now I can't remember if she mentioned this before, but she kind of works there too. So his company's name is Open Arms. She is 36 and her boyfriend's, gr his name is Greg. He is 42. Not too crazy of an age gap. Um, and he looks like a good guy. And I like the fact that he he's in a career that's to help others. 
Now, Kriana goes to talk to him in his office, and, you know, Kriana is just so beautiful. She's gorgeous, like she really is. But she's still trying to bring this lawsuit, bring charges for Deborah in that fight. A lot of y'all have disagreed with me on this topic, and I totally respect that. But I think Kriana should let this go. In my eyes, it was a fight that happened at a nightclub. Things were crazy. The situation was heated. And that's that. Like, why spend so much time and money trying to bring charges? Like, nah, but y'all let me know what y'all think about that. So then there is a brunch with Wendy, Ashley, Giselle, Karen, and Stacy. So Stacy has gone to her mediation and she says that she left there pretty surprised after finding out a lot of things. Nothing crazy, just a lot of things when it came to like the accounting because she says that when she was married, she didn't have to worry about paying no bills, uh, how, where to make checks or things like that. Her husband took care of all of that. But now she's seeing like, oh, there were accounts that I didn't know existed and things like that, which I think it's definitely important for wives to be aware of this. But I also think it's normal because even Wendy said that her husband, make he takes care of everything when it comes to that. Because in her eyes, I mean, she's so busy taking care of the kids and the household. That's what he takes care of. And I like I said, I think that's some of my parents do that too. I don't think my mom could probably know how to pay a light bill because my dad does it. Then Ashley talks about her meeting with Michael over their divorce. She says that they went in there trying to get it all settled out that same very day. And they did agree on the custody. He's going to have 10 days a month. But the one thing that she didn't really see eye to eye with him was that Michael wants a confidentiality clause. And he wants that to be implemented for eternity, for perpetuity. He don't want Ashley to talk about him until she goes to the grave, okay? Um, so she doesn't really want to sign that. I think she might not want to sign it because she won't be able to make him a storyline anymore. But I think she'll be okay, though. So moving on, Karen goes to lunch with her daughter, Raven. Raven looks like somebody I would totally be friends with. Like, super energetic and nice and sweet. And she's, she is in marketing and she's been working, she says that she's been working with Amazon. That's super exciting. So Raven is telling Karen that, you know, her as her mom, that sometimes she is so strong, like she carries so much and that can kind of get in the way of her being vulnerable. And she's telling her, Karen that it's okay for her not to be super strong and to be open sometimes. And then Karen briefly mentions that some of the ladies have been all over her over this accident slash crime um and raven says listen anyone coming to you other than uh from a place of concern if anything other than that that's shameful so that period all right so then we see mia and her girlfriend jacqueline meet up at a boutique mia wants to take her shopping because she says jacqueline cannot dress at all she even says that jacqueline and giselle should be very close <laughs> considering their fashion Jacqueline tries some outfits. They were all tragic. And then Mia asks her about her situation with PP. That's her man. That's his nickname. So they talk about Ink again as well, which I'm tired of hearing about. But Mia does tell Jacqueline that she is pissed that Giselle, or as Mia called her, Crella DeVille, <laughs> brought up her Instagram at the party. Mia says, like, is Giselle obsessed with me? Because this isn't the first time that she's brought up my family situation in front of the group. She says, if Giselle was actually concerned, then she should reach out to me privately, not just when we're all together. So that's definitely been bothering her. All right, so in the last portion of the episode is Ashley doing some work with an organization. Um, she actually invited the whole group, and some of them brought their kids it was to help the homeless. And this is very near and dear to Ashley's heart because she was almost homeless at some point. So I'm glad that they are doing something to help the community. As soon as Mia gets there, she hugs Giselle and she says, I got some worse for you later. <laughs> that made me laugh. I don't know why. She said, you get a hug right now, but you'll get some worse from me later. I then got a little confused. I don't know how this exactly helped the homeless, but Ashley gets into some harness and she goes to the very top of a humongous building to climb down. Ashley was so nervous. I mean, I would be too. Like climbing down that whole building from the top to the bottom, that's scary. But she did it. She did it. They were all down there, even her kids watching her. 
being nervous for her, but she did it. So, eventually Mia talks to Giselle. Because Mia says that she always wants to be direct with her. So, Mia tells her that she didn't like Giselle questioning her in front of the whole group. And, you know, I personally think that's fair. Mia has a right to say that to Giselle. But Mia started to go a little too low. She says to Giselle... For example, you like to make it look like everything is perfect with you and your girls. But when we were in the DR on our vacation, you told me that you caught them on the ring cam sneaking in boys to the house. Whoa. Like, how did we get here? Mia says, I'm just reminding you because I'm dealing with someone with mental health and you can't do this to me. What did surprise me was that Giselle was kind of calm about it like i expected her in the moment to kind of read mia down to the point of tears but i am super sure that we will see how we will see giselle have a much bigger reaction when when this ruminates in her mind i really do think that but listen i don't think mia should have said that she could have made her point without saying that part about the daughters Uh uh-uh and then the way she said it oh they're sneaking boys into the house like oh my gosh that did not sit well with me y'all but that was the end of the episode so you guys let me know your thoughts were you shocked that mia said this anything you want to tell me please don't forget to like and subscribe and i'll catch y'all next time y'all have a great one bye